In rural America, there is always someone to blame. Whether it's a group of immigrants or the local government, Small Town USA always needs a villain. But in a small southern Colorado community, there lies a legend that is a little more sinister. The people of Alamosa, Colorado have a wish in their graveyard. Now there's a lot of stipulations as to why this witch is here. The legend of the witch is the angel that protects her grave looks up with her hand at the sky to lock the soul of the witch into the statue so that it can never get out. If you check her grave, she died October 36th, which obviously 36 is not an actual day of the month. It runs off the witch's calendar. She lived alongside the river. Children would go down by the river to go play and she would lure them into her home where she would cook and eat them and use them for satanic rituals and dispose of their remains in the Rio Grande. The townspeople ended up taking the witch from her house and taking her to Main Street where they walked her from the beginning of Main Street to the end and hanged her in Town Square. Personally, I'm not a guy who would believe things without a little bit of evidence. So I decided to go investigate this mysterious witch. I found that in this graveyard, she has the most expensive, tallest plot that is the closest to the to the road, and the first thing you see every single time when you walk into the graveyard. I noticed that across the way, that there was not only one, but three different secret societies who all own graveyard plots in the local Alamos graveyard. This in and of itself wouldn't be cause for concern, but the Freemasons in particular have a pentagram symbol that was creepy to say the least, especially in a graveyard, accusing a witch of being buried. And then another most curious thing was a little bit farther down the way, there was a mausoleum where it seemed like there were equally powerful and wealthy family who died at the same year that the witch died, 1913, was when Wilma Becker and Theodore Imperius Becker both died. And not only that, but there was a man whose misnomer is Papa Pete, who died on the same year. So this might suggest that there was a, a little bit of a gangman style, style feud in between two extremely wealthy families. Which would also explain why the reputation of one of those families was tainted with the, the accusation that one of them was practicing the dark arts in the early 20th century. But that didn't really seem right either. So I dug a little bit deeper. I went to my local library, I went to the local town clerk, trying to find any evidence of poor Wilma Becker ever existing. found it in the form for death certificate <laughs> and it's it clearly read that she was divorced once out in the early 20th century reason enough to be accused of practicing dark arts but not only that she didn't keep her married name she changed her name three times 
which I'm sure was quite the, the controversy back in the day. Also, when we looked at our death certificate, it explained the discrepancy of uh, the gravestone reading October 36, and explained it as an engraver error, which also doesn't make any sense. Because mistakes happen, but not on that big of gravestones, and not on a date that doesn't even exist. It seems like poor old Wilma Becker was just a woman who got divorced and then had her reputation tarnished because of it. Because in small towns, they always need a villain. And sometimes those villains get immortalized and become urban legends. And to this day, there are still children walking around that graveyard trying to scare themselves and trying to see the witch of Alamosa. <laughs>